Hey man, check it, man. Boss Talk 101, man. We here in Los Angeles, California, man. We, hey, I done ran into a GM in here. My guy, Tweeway, way Ricky Ross. Yeah, we doing this. Man, oh, thank you for coming on the show, man. We doing it again. Man, I love doing it too, man. It's it's something else, man, about, like, when you when I come out here now, every time I've been out here and did Boss Talk, I always get to interview Freeway. That's my highlight moment. So I was kind of nervous. I was like, man, am I going to get him? They say he out of town. He in Vegas. I was like, why didn't yeah, you yeah, I, wanna, I, I just went to Vegas. Uh, you know, Top Rank had a fight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thursday with Telefimo. And uh, I went up there because one of my guys, Troy Isley, assigned to Top Rank. Okay. So I'm helping him now, showing him how to market himself. Great fight. Ooh, ooh. Bronze medalist. Uh, but I don't believe that he is getting the due respect he should get. So, um he hollered at me down in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. I was down at the National Scout fighting, you know, looking, for, <laughs> looking under the rocks and looking for the next youngster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that the next one is going to come from the National. Yeah, 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 yeah. The next great one is going to come out of them National. You've so. been focused on that like crazy. Ever since you came home, ever since you've been there, you just spoke, you tapped into boxing. What made you just get into boxing like that? Let me tell it's a long story. <laughs> I'm here. I was in Vegas one year. I think it was the Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard. Okay, okay, back then, yeah. We was at Caesar's Palace, and uh, Don King, yeah, yeah, came out to the table, and he shook everybody's hand at the table. It was a bunch of us from LA. We had a great big table, and plenty of food, plenty of food, everything, plenty of girls. Hey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he couldn't miss us. <laughs> Literally, he was going to walk to the casino, and, then, and and you know, some of the guys at the table is inventors, yeah, yeah, of this big, yeah. But yeah. the values that you see people wearing now, oh, yeah, these were the first guys. Matter of fact, my guy, uh, Tommy, the first time I saw his, I thought it was a hubcap uh -huh. off a car. Wow, is that big? <laughs> I remember when they was wearing like the Benz sign. You remember that? That's what I think his was a Benz. The Benz, sign. they would put the big Benz emblem. Some of them were snatching off cars. I remember it. Believe it or not, they were. No, 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 Fast forward for 10 years, 12 years. I'm sitting in federal prison, and boxing come across my mind. I'm writing my autobiography, and I was like, wow. What would have happened that day if you'd have told Don King you had $3 million and you was willing to give him all that money wow. to take you with him? Where would you be at today? And... Uh, you know, I look back at all the stuff Don King mm -hmm. had did, you know, the Mike Tyson. This was before Mike Tyson was even. Even before he was telling. Before Mike Tyson was even. Nobody, he, nobody knew him. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so, uh, and so many other great fighters that Don King had that came after that incident. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew that I would have been able to get in and, and, and bring some type of um, value mm -hmm. to it. Uh, my goal is anybody that I mess with, is to bring value to them. You know, uh, and they want to interview with you right now. Oh, man. I want to bring value to them. I always do. To what you're doing. If I can't bring value, why am I here? Right, right. You know, what what, 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 what good is it? So when, when I was writing my book and I thought about it, and I was like, wow, you probably wouldn't even be in prison right now. All right, if you don't have three million. Well, I had it. You never had it. I had the money. You just didn't do it. I just didn't give it. Man said wasn't there. Wasn't focused on that. Nah, no, I just didn't know. You know, nobody explained the future to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I had investments, you know, I had motel, tire shops, beauty salons, but I had never thought about you could be a boxing promoter. But you think about it when you're sitting in prison and you, you get to think about a lot of things. Yeah, your mind get real clear. You get real clear. So <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, them people snap a life sentence on you. Like, oh man, you start thinking about a whole lot of good stuff that, <laughs> that you gonna miss. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I remember some guys we were going through some things. They said, "Yeah, man, come on, ride with me." People would think you really would ride. You just thinking about things that was going on in the world. 
Yeah. You know, what I mean? <laughs> when you're locked up, you're not going out there, but your mind can take you there. So yeah. That's what oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Your mind oh. is, 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 is super, super powerful. And, you know, and that's one of the other things that I learned is to allow yourself to dream. Yeah. You know, and, and that's one of the things that, that I really feel we as black people uh-huh. have lost our ability to dream. Man. And a dream is vision. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a dream is something saying that this is possible. Mm. Your mind is telling you that this is possible, that you could accomplish this goal. Have you ever had a chance to read that article they did in, in L.A. Magazine on me? Well, what, when did they do it? 2013. No, I didn't read it. No, I How? What was it about? Like, did it, what did it capture? When he came to interview me, he was writing my obituary. Wow. He said he was writing my obituary. And I was telling him about my business plan. He said, oh, you writing a business plan and, and, and you dead. <laughs> what the hell are you doing with a business plan? You don't need no business plan. You need a, a funeral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was laying out my business plan. You know, oh, I'm going to get into boxing. Or I'm going to have a clothing line. Or I'm going to do a movie. Or I'm going to have books. Or I'm going to have mixtapes. Or I'm going to be working with rappers. I'm going to do concerts. Wow. Visionary. You know, that's the thing, man. Like when you look at where you come from, all the tri you the trifectas, the things that you went through to get to where we at now, nobody could have wrote that. No yeah. way. No uh, way. Yeah. Nobody sees you doing everything that you you've embodied over a span of uh, like life. I didn't see it. No way you could see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. It's, it starts to come gradually. Now now you have the first vision, right? With that vision can be altered. Yeah. You know, can be made bigger, uh, made brighter. Yeah. Uh, um, so, so no, I, I didn't know. I mean, I never thought, because I didn't have my time up in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So being in Texas, I no longer got L.A. newspaper, L.A. news. When I get out of jail, I don't even know marijuana is legal. <laughs> yeah yeah so i had no idea that i would be in the marijuana business that was the furthest thing from my mind i i had made a you you know when i caught the the second case i caught the second case but while i was doing the first case i saw what death row did okay you know, man, Ariel was Sally's when, yeah, yeah, when they yeah, started. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I got a first-hand look at when that phone was, was birthed. Wow. I was in the delivery room. You heard and seen it all. You know what I'm saying? I was in the room when David Kenner, Ariel, and me were all in the same attorney room. That's crazy, man. Like, t- t- did you think it would ever be as big as it was? got? I didn't even believe in it, you know. <laughs> if If... When Harry was talking about music, I was talking about sports. <laughs> he was talking about music. He was talking music. I was you talking about sports. sports. Exactly. And but I had, and I had all the plugs in the music already. I had already knew Dick Griffey, Otis Smith. I had met Barry Gordy one time. So I already had the plugs in the music. You know, Dick Griffey. He was a part of the, wasn't he part of Def, Def Row too? Did he? He helped. He, 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 helped he, with he it. negotiated from what I heard and heard and read in the papers. Well, he did told me himself that he took Suge to uh, Interscope and he negotiated the contract for Suge with Interscope. Because, uh, you know, Dick was one of the first independents. Him and Otis Smith was one of the first independent uh, record people, black record people in the business. Some kind of way DLC said he was tired of that too. When Death Row first be- was being born, I owned it. Mm, wow. How? Where Death Row used to be. Future Shock. Future Shock was a company, Dre and I and, and Shug and a guy named Dick Griffey started. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, all the period of time uh, in that business space, sometimes 
things can get, you know, uh, mixed up. When we interviewed him, he yeah. said him, Dick, Greg, Greg, it was four of them. The way the way they he explained it to me. Okay, okay. But that now that that's excluding Harry O, though, right? Because Harry O was locked up at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Harry just got out. Correct. How's he doing? I was doing very well for him. Well, you know, Harry's a genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to just let you know flat out. He's a genius. The man is a genius. You know, he's one of the smartest dudes I ever saw in my life. I ever had a chance to uh, talk to. You know, he, he he he's on the ball. Wow. And, and and the thing is, man, like to see where you at now, to open a dispensary, man, after that, did you ever think? You, you couldn't have thought it because you didn't know. But <laughs> it's crazy that, that, that you're even dealing with it now. No way and no one nobody would ever think. Well, you know, when when, when I first started to get into the, the, the motion to get a dispensary, they didn't want convicted felons to work in dispensary. Wow. That's how I twisted this citizen twist. So we had to go in and argue why convicted felons should be allowed to work in a dispensary. Wow, that's crazy. And 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 guess who they picked to argue? Why who picked me? Oh, so, and why why was it so difficult? Like, well, for me it was real simple, you know, but you have politicians who never smoke weed, they say, never sold weed. So they know nothing about weed. Right. But they're making decisions for the industry. Uh. They really didn't understand that had it not been for the people who went to prison for selling weed, it wouldn't be legal right now. Wow. Wow. Those people made a statement. When you go to prison for that, that was that was literally making a statement. Like, yeah. hey, I believe in this. Yeah. yeah. I believe in this enough to go to prison for it. So the people who went to prison for marijuana should be held in a, in, in, a, in a high light, especially all the people who, who were in the business, because had those guys not made those sacrifices, it wouldn't be where it's at today. It's crazy, like, to convince, you know, them to, how did you just break down the, how did you get them convinced that it's okay for a guy who has a felony to be able to, you know? Not that it's okay. That it's absolutely necessary. Wow. That this business is not going to survive if these guys are not allowed to participate. Mm. First of all, guys did not stop selling weed because of prison. Prison is not what stopped people from selling marijuana. No. Can't do it with prison. Prison ain't stopping them from selling cocaine, crack, um, amphetamine. They still sell all that stuff, and they they giving ways of time out for it. But dudes are still out here selling it Ugh. because they have no other way to make an income. This That's is what real. they know. They hustlers. The drug business has no selling. They don't care what color you is. They don't care about none of that. All they care is about, do you have some money? Will you take care of your business? You do those, that's all the drug business care about. I thought about you when I was on the way over. I said, have you, going in the bid, doing the things that you've done, have, did, did any deal ever go bad where you went in to purchase something and it didn't go right? A lot of you, Because you like, man, I mean, how many? That's what I'm saying. Like, like there's crazy instances. I lost a friend like that. He got shot, you know, because the deal didn't go right because somebody tried to rob him. They came down from another state. I think it was from Memphis. They came to Texas and they tried to, you know, they they supposed to do a deal and go back to Memphis. But when they came, they didn't. They came to rob him. Right, right. And he ended up killing him. But like, there has been cases like that. I know I've seen as well in the game. I never, never got robbed. Never got robbed. That's what I was thinking. I almost got kidnapped before. Ooh, almost got kidnapped. And, you know, I don't have people run off with millions. Correct. Millions. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars they don't run off with. Uh, the way I looked at it is if I give it to you, then it was something I could lose. Yes, because you're funding this. You're funding it to them. Correct. So if you fund something to them, 
you already got it got to be something that you can afford to, to, lose. to lose. They may not give it back. They may not say, you know what, I appreciate what he did for me. I'm going to make sure he get his too. How did you determine who you would front to? Well, well you know, it's, 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 it's a numbers game. You know what I'm just saying? How would you determine? Because the, the, the person, he comes to you, he wants to be. Well, well, the first thing I would do is try to make sure they're not smoking dope. That's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. Yeah. And then you find somebody to smoke dope, they ain't going to smoke. That's right. That's so true. Now, they might start off a little while and make some money, but eventually the dope going to catch up with them. Mm-hmm. So that would be the first thing. Then I would look for guys with a temperament like mine. You know, guys who um, maybe down on their luck. You know, maybe didn't do well in school, but maybe was a great athlete. Those guys are always good. Yeah. You yeah. know, they just got to be trained. Mm. A lot of times, a lot of times it comes down to what you know and who you know. Mm. And when I say what you know, because what you know can get you a long ways. You know, if you're good at what you do, if you're good at your trade, you know, you can come in a place and, 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 and if you're smart, you know, like me, <laughs> I'll come in there and I'll be like, I work for free. Yes. You ain't got to pay me nut. Makes sense. Teach me the game. Teach me the game, coach. <clears throat> I, who you know, now if you know somebody, good person, and they willing to train you, that's another way to get in. I thought about if somebody knows, when you say who you know, meaning if somebody's already connected to you, and they bring that person and say, hey, you know, this is my friend. He, be, he you know. Yeah, that's the same thing. thing. Same, same, same thing. Yeah. yeah that's 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 a, and uh, uh, that's a level further away than if they come straight to me. Yeah, yeah. But if you, a lot of times what happens, the people, if say you front this guy or whoever, or this person, he's going to have people that he's dealing with. And as he get more loyal to them, or if he comes up on a level, he may come bypass them or find a way to get to you because he's trying to figure out a way to ca- connect to the source. Right, well, that's always, that's always, everybody that's trying to get right. to the source. <laughs> everybody trying to get to the source. I'm trying to get as cheap as I can and as good as I can. So, uh, and that's, and, and that should be with any business you go into. Wow, yeah. Get it as good as you can. And, and hopefully, you know, you don't have to step on nobody's toes, you know, doing it. And, and what I mean, like, if I take you to the source, you ain't got to cut me out, man, you can go together. So often, you know, we you take somebody to the source, oh, yeah. they cut you out. They don't want to deal with you no more. And that's for real. And then the source start to to deal directly with right. them. Yeah, yeah. When they do that, I feel shaded from both ends. I'd be like, man, you you serving that doing it? I brought I brought three y'all cut me out the deal. And then you go to the other guy, man. I brought you to this dude, and you gonna cut me out? Come on, I, 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 like Scarface movie, same thing. When he took him and met his connect, yep. And he end up, you know, that 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 happens in the game that. There's something on, on like how did you ever get over the snowfall thing and how they how they you know how they sidestepped you and did did did, did it help did it hurt did it the reputation wise I mean you know it, um, it helped I, yeah. it helped in a way and it hurt in a way mm. you know it it helped in a way because now they know black television shows of that genre makes money yeah yeah and I heard. Because they say, oh, your story been told already. Mm, mm. So I say, no, 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 no. My story ain't been told. Yeah. <laughs> that was a little bit of of it, yeah. It's a lot more than that. It's a lot more than six years. Yeah, yeah for sure. All that is six years. It's a lot more than six years of me. Wow, way more. I had to ask you something else I thought about, too. Dave Mays, you see how he connected with uh, Shug Knight, when he, how he's locked up. Would you ever done something like that when you was in the feds for us? Uh, talk on the phone and do like an AI podcast. I probably would. I see what I'm saying. I did the interviews on the phone. Okay, so okay. I, I probably would have. Uh, I probably would have did something like that had it been going when when it, it's crazy, you know. In '96, when my story broke, uh, this reporter came down, and he came down on my birthday. Okay, and he bought me a domain name. Really? He he bought my name. This reporter came down. He brought my domain name. I don't even know what happened to it, or I still own it, or what. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
this was at the birth of, of, of the internet. internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And had I been more so, aware, you'd have kept it going. And I could have kept capitalized on it more. You know, when when Dark Alliance, I mean, yeah, when Dark Alliance came out, you know, my story is the first time any major newspaper ever published a story on the internet. Really? Yeah. But the thing is, if you'd have, you'd have kept that domain and kept that same has you know mindset to keep pushing in the technology, it would have just kept rolling. It got bigger and bigger, right? But I, I didn't know. I, I didn't understand technology. I didn't either. I get it. I'm, I'm saying I, I didn't get technology when it first came out. It was like I think it was like AOL. AOL. It was all type of you know we would I worked with different stuff during that time too. Uh, uh, D ones uh, D- and I wasn't reading the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was I was bad starting to read the newspaper. You know I was still. You know, a little rough about about my study. Yeah, yeah. Especially in technology, right? Because at that time, everything was hand to hand, tangible. And you, you even the mail, you know, the U.S. mail, they didn't even believe it. That's why they didn't get ahead of it either. Right. Because they was like that. That's going that ain't gonna change nothing. We gonna keep. Oh, and this thing, thing Amazon out. was was no, nobody. Amazon no. wasn't around. It was just Amazon wasn't around. Hand to hand is what I'm saying. Yeah. Wasn't around. The mailman pull up. He still got the checks. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> But that changed, you know, and I don't think they really, because if they'd have knew, in my, I was like, if they'd have knew, they'd have got ahead of it and they'd have started creating their emails and they'd have started being more impactful. You know what I mean? Right. Or keeping right. control. Because they had everybody at the time, if you think about it, they had all, everybody coming to them for all information. But they, and that's when you, and you seen them, they filed, I don't know if you, you probably was still locked up then, but they filed to a child, you know, like they was, Losing all kind of employees. Who's on AOL? No, I'm talking about the U.S. Post Office. Oh no, I didn't pay attention. Oh, they were losing all kind of. They lost everything. Yeah, but they could have had everything in control. But that's how you get the Amazon, the UPS, and everything else start to get stronger. And that's the that's the part where you got to be on top of it. Like you just said, you gotta you gotta see it before it happens. You know, be a vision. What that is, you gotta be a vision. Yeah, yeah. So what do you when when you look at like. The dispensary and, and 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 opening it up. What what is the just run me down through there on what we got? What we got going on? Well, my dispensary gives me the right to sell weed in California. Okay. Um. With that, it gives me the opportunity to use my skills to make this business become one of the biggest businesses that I can do. Um, what I do at my dispensary, we we buy weed from brands. Okay. Uh, we're able to buy from the best growers in California um, all the way down to the worst growers. So when you come in, you got a selection. We we have, I think, 80 SKUs is what they call it. Wow. In, in store terms. And that means Different brands of, of of weed that that we carry, um, <clears throat> and it puts me on equal footing with everybody else that has a dispensary. Okay, you being one that's dealt with drugs, drug selling, dealt with all type of drugs. Does that give you a upper hand now that you own a dispensary? Well, I feel like I give myself up, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, when I look at at when I look out here at, at at the world, I see a lot of people who can't think, okay, or refuse to think. I mean, when one time I read a book and it says, "What's the difference between a guy who can't read and a guy who won't read?" Ain't much different. Ain't no different. No. <laughs> because I look at, like, the guy who can't read, if he start trying, because I was a guy who couldn't read at one time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I start trying to read, and then I eventually learned how to read. Now, a guy who say we can't read, but he won't, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is he lying? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're so right. Like, that, like, when you go into the dispensary, how did you come up with the design, how everything would lay out? I, I had I had some people come in and and, and design it, you know, sh- show me what. I ain't no designer. I know, but you still gotta prove it. That, that's that's a part and, of and you. Lay, gotta, you gotta you know the layout. You know, one of my one of my one of my strong points. Let me give y'all my I'm gonna give y'all my secret. <laughs> okay, 
is I let the people who do what they do do what they do. do. <laughs> <laughs> who am I to tell you? You 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 a designer? How can I tell you what to design? Yeah, you know what I tell them? I want something they gonna like. Yeah, and that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, okay. What about the quality though? The quality of the product. How do you know what they're telling you is the best? Because my manager, okay, in my store, okay. Is the best damn manager in the whole world. Here and down. I put her up against anybody. You never see the best manager. I listen. <laughs> I hold myself in high regard. <laughs> when I go around her, I humble myself. Wow. Because I see brilliance. What gave you the confidence in her? How did you figure that out? You had to you had to know something about her. I met her at a book signing at okay. a dispensary. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So I go to this dispensary and I'm I'm signing books and my weed is in their dispensary too. I'm selling weed too, but you know you can't actually sell. I couldn't actually sell the weed. They had to sell it for me, but I could tell people, "Hey, go buy my weed too. You know, I got my book. Go buy my weed." Yeah, 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 yeah. So I meet her. You know, cool. So we get in front of her. We start talking. I don't know. She the manager of the store. Wow, this store cracking. Yeah, it's going in. It's cracking. Wow. I'm thinking she's just a, a butt tender, right? Because yeah. that's how she carries. She ain't, you know, uh, you know, ain't all muscled up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. She's okay. She's getting there working. Figured it out. So we start talking, and, and, and then she started giving me tips. Hey, this is what you need to do with your brand. Oh, yeah. Well, how did you know that? He said, well, this what this what's selling the most. This is what they buying. Wow. So I started to gravitate to her knowledge. Okay. I called her, hey, what you think about this here? And I won my license. So when I called her, I was like, hey, I won my license. What you think about coming and, and, and running my store for me? And she's like, ah, you know, I'm, I'm over here. You know, if you need some help, I'll do what I can. And then this incident happened where this NFL football player beat up his wife, who was black. Oh, yeah. He was white. Then he killed her. His dad was part owner of the store. Whoa. So they took all the black product out of the store. Ugh. And she quit. Wow. Integrity. She knows she, she don't want to be there. My store was Correct. two months from being ready to open. Wow. What luck. So did she, she called you? She was like, hey, man. I'm nope. We, we was talking. Y'all already talked. Because she was already going to help me with my store. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, even if she stayed at the job, she's already committed to helping me. She already told me, oh, I'm going to help you get your store going. Don't worry yeah. about it. Um, but then... When that happened, it was a shooting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you think that's that's one of your qualities to go in and see different people that got certain talents and be able to pick them out? But that's the game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you can spot, if you can spot great people. Oh, oh, I read this book one time, and I can't even think of the author. <clears throat> I read this book one time, and the guy said, "What's your greatest commodity?" This one guy said. Oh, cups. The guy shook his head. He said, no. The greatest commodity is the people. Yeah, yeah. Because without the people, the cup, the car, the houses, none of that shit don't mean nothing. It's yeah. the people. It's the people. It's the people. I, 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 like I said, I, I really like to see you thriving, doing the business that you once was really, they was a, it was a black eye in the game because you was doing the business. Now to be doing that business, how, how dope is that? It's super dope. I'm gonna get a game of black. <laughs> you know, I've been hanging out with you boxers. Oh yeah, got yeah, my jaw together. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, get that jab on there. But it's dope though to, to see you pull that off. You know, it, it, it's like man, you know, because when people think of you, they think of that. You know what I mean? So it's just a it's a dope way to brand yourself. Wait till you see some of the articles they've been writing in the Weed magazine. What? Wow. I can only imagine. Hey, some of these writers, they got vision. <laughs> they see they, it. Oh, even take the game over. Like, it's over. They see this incredible stuff. <laughs> the, the game is over. It belonged to it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But, I mean, that, that's what I say, man. Like, the universe lock it in a certain way, man. God is different. 
you don't play with us, man. I like it had to be something to it. But what about people that's incarcerated for like weed, marijuana, like a lot of the partners of mine, like, do they ever get, you know, exonerated and ca- do they ever get to get out of it? They should. You know, California did it. They did it. Quite, quite, quite a few states. You know, we, 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 you know, we traveled around doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, got, we got lawyers together and the lawyers would do all the paperwork for, for people to get their cases expunged and, and, and so forth. Uh, with the social equity, That'd with the cool. social equity, uh, you know, I went all around the country talking about social equity. Yeah, yeah. You know, why uh, they couldn't exclude not only convicted felons, but also blacks. Yeah. Also yeah. Hispanics. Yeah. You know, all of these people play a part in this legalization of marijuana. That's something else. So they also should, should be able to participate in the legal side of it. Because, you know, for a while, the only people who were getting the license was rich. I know. People, yeah, people that didn't look like us. And, you know, that's the crazy part. Like, like at the end of the day, the, the, the game, the, 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 all of the money, all of the invested interest, the way that the game was even rolled out was because of us. Absolutely. It wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for us. Right. And then now you say, oh, well, we don't, well, we don't want them to play part in it. Anytime they can. They don't say that, right? They don't want to see it. They say, oh, the license is 150000 <laughs> Don't say that like that. That's how they say it. Yeah, oh, the 150000 you know, who who black got one hundred fifty thousand? They know that they know to put it in a way that you, it's hard to get to. In so, Florida, in Florida, in order to get a license, twenty three million dollars you have to have in bank. They made it to where it's a high. Like you, you're not going to be able to get. That's the same way they do, like the NFL teams as well. Same thing. To be an owner of a you what a team. You can play on the team, but you can't be an owner. Yeah. That's why I ain't no fan. Yeah. And me neither. I mean, look, we sitting right here doing interview today, you know. But you know, the thing I, I look at, like, you one that you always try to give back. I seen you mean you was at the at Miss Shout out to Mama Scott. You know, we got shout out. But Mama <laughs> Scott. But you coming she down down, down there. Ooh. Man, she showed love, man. She always do that though. You know, we did the first. Like, Mama Scott ain't no joke. Not at all. We did a fast bash and everything else down there where she lost a lot of money. But she's the type of person she don't stop giving. You know, and I think that's live, you know. And, and for us to be able to come together. Well, you know, they say that's like a boomerang. Really? Yeah, it's like a boomerang. Yeah, yeah. You know, the boomerang, you throw it out, come right back. Come right back. So the same thing in life. And one of the things that I learned, because, you know, I went in literally, but I read over 300 books. Before 300, I, I was going to ask you, like, which one was the most, the one that impacted you the most? Well, I would say three of them, my three favorite books. Y'all already know what them books is already. I shouldn't even have to tell you. <laughs> y'all be slipping. But let me slip. I know y'all got to hear over the Some of y'all got to hear one. That's right. Some got to hear two. Some got to hear ten. And then got to hear the hundred times. That's right. And then there's another group we have that ain't going to never, never get it. So dude, let's give it out. Richest Man in Babylon. Okay, for y'all who like money, think and grow rich. Yeah, I like that one. For y'all who like to organize, yeah. be smart, and as a man think or as a woman think, for y'all who want to be strong. A- after reading those books, which one was like when you started to plan even more when you read the book? You're like, man, this it made me think, and I already was on this, but I'm on it even more now. All three of them. All man. three of them. Because when you read one, when I read one, I said, oh, I got to go read that other one over again. <laughs> You know, I read up them books like 25 times. Yeah, because you had time. <clears throat> I, yeah, I had a lot of time. <laughs> and I didn't have nothing else to do. I didn't want to watch no football and no basketball. I, when I first started, I was watching football. That's how I did my time. Okay. Football season, basketball season. E.O. Yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but then after I started reading, then I had time for no football, basketball. All I want to do is read, read, read. And I know now that had somebody would explain to me at a young age that it was so much game in books yeah, that I could get in a week would it took somebody 26 years or 30 years to live. Man. I could get it in a week, three days, and it was going to show me how to be a better person, how to get some money, how to bend, learn how to read. Wow. And, and so... You you one of these guys that I know you're a thinker, right? Looking at, say, the Cat Williams interview, it did 50 some million views quick. One of the second most viewed interviews on the internet. Um, 
You know, I hang out when I got what, home. What did it do? Did, if anything, what impact did it have on on entertainers? Entertainment. And I doubt if it had any. That's what I said. <laughs> you know, I, I I used to hang out at Cat House when I first came home, so I've been heard all that stuff. Oh, oh, so it was just like a rerun to you. I don't even never watch it. <laughs> and you didn't never watch it. Nah, I'm gonna watch it. Now. Wow, so you all I should be at the house with him. I am. I, I used to tell I used to tell people all the time, you know, people who I know I said, boy, if I ever had a camera and they catch that that shit cat be talking about. <laughs> so you knew it was uh, people would watch it. Yeah. <laughs> they think cat funny on stage? Oh, the conversation isn't even funny. One on one. I was there every day. I used to drive to Calabasas every single day. This is when he was retired because I was I want to be his manager. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard these conversations? I'm trying to get back on the stage. Like, cat, wow. I'm broke, cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, to see, I mean, there's a lot of people I've said, I interview all these comedians and they go, Did y'all ever think comedians go back and you know what like, you mean? Oh, up. I have. We did it in Austin. But we never. I know that the I don't know who was living there. I don't. You don't know I Cookie? No, who was Cookie? Cookie was living in the house. Why did she live she in Los Angeles or she, she out of Atlanta? She's staying in Atlanta. She said, I'm going to Atlanta, but I'm going to Vegas. I'll give you a cookie note. Yeah, I need, to, I need to link up with her. I want to hear these two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because they cookie. really, not, they really be having a like, Cookie can tell the, the cookie guy. <laughs> cookie got some shit to tell. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, the, the comedians are going crazy on this internet, man. They just, every one of them is, I, I mean, you got to think about it. Even in rap, all this stuff is competitive, man. Oh, absolutely. People compete. People well, life is competitive. Life you know, is competitive. Dispensaries is going to be competitive, too. They better. <laughs> I'm going to try to knock their socks off. <laughs> they better. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm going to put, you going to put a black eye on it. It's teaching me how to do the jab. You know, you know what the jab is? What is the jab? The jab is the setup shot. Oh, the yeah. jab ain't going to, they don't knock, it, very few people get knocked out with, with the jab. jab. The jab is just to set you up. To set you up. And what I'm doing right now is I'm setting them up. And sometimes they use a jab as an illusion. Like, wow. they'll hit you with it, but they ain't really going to hit you with it. It's well even at you to make you think they're going to hit, hit you with it. I, You know, you keep talking about boxing, and I got to skip again to, I didn't never get to talk to you about that fight with Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence. And you're talking about the jab. He never established a jab or anything with uh, Crawford, and that's his strong point. What went wrong, or what did you see in that fight? Well, you see a superior a superior guy. Did he look like did, but you've seen Smith Crawford, fight before. Crawford is a superior guy. He's a he, different he's a different person. You know, I've been down in, in Omaha. You really watched a lot. I know you have. With his own he's, and and you know, I listen to him talk and they the guy's different. You know, the guy don't party, he don't drink, he wrestles, he skates, he yeah. dances. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we take Spence on the other hand. Spence having a great time. Dallas Cowboys, City Lights, drunk, City Lights, wrecking the Ferrari. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it you went know, crazy. That 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 stuff take a toll on you when when you got a person who is totally committed. You know, Crawford yeah. is totally committed. Yeah, and you know I can't wait to see this fight with uh um uh Canelo. I'm a, I'm a, I'm betting on that fight. I should have bet. Who fight? Is he fight Canelo? Yeah, he's going to fight Canelo. When? They're going to lock it in. Who you got? I'm going to put 10000 on Crawford. I don't gamble either. Yep. <laughs> I don't gamble. Right. right. But this one, you My guys told me. They call, they call the Ryan Garcia tank card. Wow. Really? They told me. And this is because, you know, I'm messing with all the coaches now. You know, yeah, yeah. My game is to get the coaches. Now, yeah. Okay, I can't talk to the fighters, but I can handle the, the coaches. coaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I talked to the coaches. They've been telling me, what? wow. So they feel like they told it's me. It's going to be a knockout? They told me that it was going to oh, be a knockout. Oh, on the wall with, with, with Spence. With Spence. They told me, they said, Spence ain't going to make it. They knew. They knew. Anthony Peterson, my, you know, I managed Anthony Peterson. He told me, he said, "Man, but I don't gamble when I tell my friends what to bet on." To bet on, they're coming in the Oh man, you got to get in there. Aren't you? So this next one, I'm going. They already said, "Man, if he fight," I know Ryan Garcia now is going to fight uh, uh, Devin Haney. 
They just announced that. Well, you know, I was I was just with Bill. Uh, yeah, I got him when I get to Vegas. Oh, you go get Bill? Yeah. Yeah, we, we did it. We did it last time. We were just with Bill. Uh, when was that? That was just a few days ago when I talked to you. Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we was with Bill. So what do you think about the fight? I'm taking Devin. You're taking Devin? Yeah, I'm taking Devin. Garcia is the... He's an internet guy. He's a, he's he's like Devin the, looked so strong. He did that last fight against Regis Pro Ray. Yeah, that uh, I don't think nobody in that one forty want to mess with him. Nobody. What 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 what? what okay, where's Tank here? Tank one thirty five. You know the problem yeah. they having with that fight is Tank one thirty five, Devin one forty now. So they want Devin to come down. Devin to want Tank to come up. Do you think it'll happen? Will that fight ever happen? Not right now. I don't think the money is, is strong enough strong down up. I think after this uh uh Ryan Garcia and the tank card, you know, they make that they make that money. Um and then they may uh go with the tank with the tank situation. What well, okay. I, and you know I always go back to Kid Austin and you told me he was good and who are you looking at now? What are you doing with, with, with who you who are you working with? Well, Right now, you know, I got Troy Isley. Okay. My best fighter I ever had. At okay. was amateur background. He was a bronze medalist in the Olympics. Okay. Um, I got another kid, uh, Jason Moreno. He make his debut uh, Saturday in Philadelphia. I got another kid that I'm working with called Kraken out of uh, Alabama. Uh, Albert Vermeer out of uh, New Orleans. Uh, another kid out of uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. I met him at the Nationals. Keith. Uh, we, we we don't have a deal yet, but he's going to let me help him negotiate his deals. Uh, he's talking to all the top promoters. Who else I'm on right now? Probably a couple other kids I'm on that I just can't think of right now. You know, there's so much stuff in my head right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Film. Yeah. We, we finna cast, start casting the film. We should be finna? casting my movie. You finna, uh, yo, you going to go or you? They finna cast. cast. Finally. So you finally going to get it done. Nobody going to try to steal it. Listen, me and you done sat down a few times. Every time you start doing something, somebody try to take it. Somebody try to figure out a way to stop it. What? I, 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 oh, is this gonna happen? No, this is this is this gonna happen. Okay, we've been we've been building this for, for me and me and uh, me and Gino been working on this film. Um, cause you know the Hughes brothers was gonna do my movie when I was yeah. in jail. Yeah. So Gino was the reason I didn't do. The movie with the Hughes Brothers is Universal Music. Yeah, yeah. Universal uh, Movies. Mm -hmm. um, because I didn't like the contract, and, you know, they told me I could have the soundtrack. Then after we got ready to sign the contract, it wasn't in the, you know, it wasn't in the contract that I yeah. had a, the, the soundtrack. I said, hey, it ain't in the contract. <laughs> so me and Gino have been working that long since, like, 95. Wow. We've been trying to put this together. We done been through a lot. So uh, I got a text the other day. And they said they needed a headshot for all the producers, um, whatever the paperwork called. I can't think of it right now. And all you boxers, if I didn't call your name, call oh, early. We're going back. <laughs> remember, remember, I'm early. Give me a pass. Give me a pass. Like, <laughs> I do it on you need to. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> sure, man. Uh, but they called me and asked me for the headshot for that paperwork. And this is my movie, so yeah, 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 yeah. All your movie. Oh, this is your movie, like, like that is got So much stuff going on. But you, you gotta think about it, man. Like, like to do a movie. How hard is the the casting calling? Getting the people you want in place to do the movie. Well, you know what? I, what I want to do, I want to get some. You know, I told them from the beginning, I want to get some new people shot. So I want to go to. We want to do a casting call here. I want to do one in Atlanta. I want to do either Houston. Dallas and probably Chicago. Wow. I want to do Castle and Hayward. So you want a variety? Yeah, I want people. Well, you know, I want, I don't want to be like the gatekeepers. You know, we got yeah, the gatekeepers. Yeah, yeah, oh man. You know, and they like, you know, like Cat said, they don't want to let nobody else see it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, don't bring Cat up. Dude. What about this dress thing? Does the dress thing, do you, do you think, in acting, does that de demasculate the, 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 you know, emasculate the black man? I wouldn't wear no dress. But it's a bunch of them that have that do have credibility and say that it's an art. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it could be. Right. But you know, it's certain. Well, I mean, just, you don't see Denzel, Samuel Jackson, and the Three Amigos. It was one more, but it's 
There's a few of them that's not putting on that dress. You don't even ever have to worry about that. But there's some of them that do. And some of them, Tyler Perry. I mean, I don't knock nobody for what they do. You're right. I get it. If, if, if you like men or men and you know, you're women or oh, women, I, that's your thing. I'm cool with that. But everybody that's doing the acting part not into that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get I'm just it. saying, me. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. know what I'm saying? You I, would never do it in an actor. Like, I always want to be able to go to the hood. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, they not. not they can tell me, they can tell me, oh, you can't go to the hood. If the hood says I can come, I'm coming to the hood because I like to be over there. You said, what I like. Now, whatever you like is what you like, and I ain't got no problem with what you like. No, I 100% agree. So, I if agree. you want to wear a dress in the movie and act like a woman, okay, go ahead. Yeah. That's what it takes for you to get some money. To get some money. See, I like to get my money with my mind. That's real. I like to outthink. That's real. That's real. I, I want to take it back to these sexes one time, though. Like, for you going home, when you go home now, like, that's a long time ago home. 12 years old, you left. No, I left the tech when I was three. I thought you left them 12. No, three or four. Did you go back? Because you told me you all I go, what? I go back all the time. No, I'm saying, well, when you went, when you was hauling pizza. I go every summer. That's why. That's I, just what it was. That is. That's how I get some money. <laughs> See, you can make no money. I didn't get you. Hey, they ain't had no fuckwood out there. You ain't all no damn fuckwood or no hey, When you went back, do you have, you still got so your family members, some of them? Most of my there. family members down there. Well, you know, my mom had 24 brothers and sisters. Ah, dog, man. My, what am I We live it all over the, y'all everywhere. We everywhere. I you understand. Mean, I mean, well, you know, just you? No, I got a big, big family out here. Uh, my mom probably had about seven brothers and sisters that stayed in California when I got here. Wow. When I got here. Wow. So y'all just, just, Pretty much packed up and moved. And then you're talking about, I got cousins that was 30 years older than me. Yeah, yeah. So they got kids. They got kids. They, they got, got kids. kids. So, you know, the family is, is ginormous. Uh, one of the things that, that I hope to do one day, you know, when I become like these 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 weed magazines is predicting, when I become this multi-billionaire. Billionaire. Yeah, you told me you was going that way. Well, that's what these, I, and I didn't tell these magazines. That you I, told me, I, I knew you. But you know, I didn't tell you. You didn't tell you. I'm mad tell you. No, 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 no. But I'm just saying, they know the potential and what you've done and who you are. That's they coming into that. And you that's know, what role. she said. Yeah. Yeah. When I had my grand opening, she walked up to me and, and she shook her head and she was like, man, it's up. <laughs> I said, what? She said, you and this together? Two billion. Easy. I said, wow. Well, I said, the brand, just the branding part is, is is massive. There's so many things you can do with that because of who you are and what you've been through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you got that leverage on them. Nobody else could do that. Nobody else has done what you've done. And, and I have fun doing it. That's real. Well, I just like this shit. I know, but let me go back to your family right quick. When you moved up here, when things start rolling in the, you know, back in the day when you, when the, when the drugs and all that stuff, Frank Lucas on the movie, it shows that he brought his family up. I didn't put a family with double kind. I would. I imported. Well, you know, you 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 know, you got no talent. Yeah. Yeah. So I had cousins that used to all that puck wood with me. <laughs> I saw on there all that puck wood. <laughs> <laughs> they looked at me like I wasn't doing that. You know what I'm saying? They pick it like that. I but butt, butt sticks. You know. <laughs> I said, boy, he, if I can get him in the right spot, no wear no shoes, none of that. <laughs> Man, Rick, man, I like I say, every time I come out here, I just be happy to set up, talk with you, man. And just it's it's just a blessing, man. That that so let's talk about like like any all the business ventures that you've been dealing with since you've been, you know, out here moving and shaking, man. You've done books, you've done you stuff been stole from me. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. <laughs> but but just a but little, I feel smile about But that's because you you continue to keep going. You continue to keep I going. Stop. I'm having fun. I think that's the most important part. You don't lose unless you do what? Quit. So that's the deal. They say the champ is still the champ as long as he get up off the carpet. That's right. That's so true. So, yeah, that's, what I'm, that's the part where I look at you and be like, man, like like this dude right here, They, they it's a problem as long as you out here doing Oh, no, they really got problems. It other people. No, they really got problems now, though, because not only I got the weed, I got the boxing, now I got the clothes manufacturing. Yeah, yeah, I was going to get into that. I got, I got my man, Tim, who just like, Took me in and embraced me, and then we knew each other from the eighties. Wow, what? we had prior experience. Yeah, yeah. So when, when I got that, when I got that hookup, because you know my T-shirt, yeah. Rory Ross is not a rapper. You know, I'm, but I ain't gonna say no numbers because well, I, I got that T-shirt. Uh, it was a hand. Yeah. It took me. I'll, 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 I'll check. 
<laughs> no, no, but I'm, I'm, the, the T-shirt is dope. Like, how much do, time do you do you invest time into the design? Do you even or, or somebody, somebody else design? I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah, <laughs> do let people who you need it. Yeah, somebody else design. And when you seen it, do you like? Okay, let me feel the quality of it. It's a nice shirt. Oh, the quality of the shirt got to be nice. One yeah. thing, one thing I learned from selling drugs, the quality got to be good. They want the best quality they can get at the lowest price they can get. Wow. So what I tell people all the time, when quality and price hit, you got to hit. You got to hit. You got to hit. Man, like I said, man, I, I remember seeing you at, you was at Magic. I've seen you walk in Florida when you were giving your book out. Like, you've done a lot of stuff to show, hey, I'm here. And it's going to be serious, man, on the business end. Oh, they're that's the part. And I was doing that with no money. Yeah, I know, but you still... I didn't have no money. Yeah, but your... That's your been, puzzles now. I'm going to have money. Oh, and it's going down. They predicted... What did you call no money? They predicted... It's different than what everybody else called no money, Rick. They predicted that my, my dispensary is going to do 100000 a day. Woo! 100000 a day? That's what they predicted. And that's going to be... For me, that's going to be disposable income. You know, my kids... I don't want my kids to get no more shoes. My kids got too many shoes. They got iPad, iPhone, and a computer. <laughs> they don't need no more electronics. So we good. So this hundred thousand dollars is gonna be disposable income. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I can't be like a lot of our people who get money. You know, I got mine, you get yours. No, 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 no. This money should be spread it out. Wow. Over the hoods. That's real. That's where real. people can touch it. They can take it. They can invest it. They can fuck it off if they want yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you take it as you fucked it out. That's on you. Yeah, yeah, come back. Wow. So that's the way I plan on using mine and also to expand the business. Yeah, yeah. Because expanding the business means that, you know, now you're at 100000 Now you're at 125000 Now you're at 150000 Now you're at 200000 I mean, you know, that's how I went from $125 selling cocaine. Mm-hmm. To making three million dollars a day, because every day I put it back to expand the business to make the business grow to the point to where to the point where I was doing three million dollars in one day. Three million dollars in a day or something else. I just don't see how you mentally would be able to keep up with that. I've heard that story. I've seen you tell that story, and I'm like, how did this? Well, you just you enjoy know? yourself. But you don't go you know, out this you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, like no, you don't start to steal. Let him steal a little bit. <laughs> Let him steal a little something. <laughs> the rapper stole my name. Oh, he needed that. Yeah, he Prince. I know where to melt it in the industry if he wouldn't have stolen the name. Let him have that. John Singleton needed to steal a movie. And, and John Polly, because I really feel like John really liked me. He looked up to me. At least y'all went out and talked about it. Well, I, I, and you know what I figured happened? John took the, the show to FX. And he said, I got the real Rick Ross. We want to do his movie. And FX said, oh, we don't want to deal with that gangster. We don't want to deal with the real one. You really saw drugs. We like these guys who just said it. Said it you know? We never did. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's you and you and Rick Ross. No. You've never seen him. Have y'all ever talked? We talked several times. Have y'all ever face-to-face? Not face to me. No, he don't want to talk. He never wanted to be in the same room with you. No. And I... And I you know, with all that money. That's what that's the trip. If he if it's really his money, it might if it's really his money. Might be a prop. Lefty. We can say like a dog would put that. It might be like a guy playing gay. What <laughs> you really ain't gay. You know what I'm saying? What do you think? And you just said that. Yeah, yeah. you say some of them really ain't gay. They just put on a dress and act gay. That's it. So he might be playing like he rich, but he really ain't rich. They different, that's right. But what, why do you think he, he would not want to be in the same room with you? I mean, if you put the real, you take two Nike tennis shoes, Air Jordans, everybody love them. They love them. They spend their last dollar on a pair of Air Jordans. You yep. put the fake Air Jordan and the real Air Jordan on the table. And which one get devalued? Yeah, that, 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 that one that's fake going to be. They yeah. Gonna, no, that, the kids don't want the fake. So you probably never be in the room. If y'all never, never do business, y'all would never. We can never do business. Could never do business. Yeah, what's going to probably happen is it's going to get, as I get so big, people are going to start saying, man, 
you a fake. <laughs> you got to go down in history as the fake Rick Ross. You know that's going to be his model is you when history is written. Because you know we're writing history right now. Yeah, we're yeah. making, we making history. Making history. Right so when they go down in history, he's go down in history as the fake Rick Ross, the guy who stole the real Rick Ross's. Wow. Yeah, and, and that's, that's, yeah, because you are freeway Ricky Ross who pretty much, the only way he could change that is change his name and build it all over again. That's not going to happen. <laughs> That's the only way you're going to go out in the history as the fake Rick Ross. When the history books is written, and the history books are definitely going to be written, yeah. he's going to go down in history as the fake Rick Ross, the guy who stole the real Rick Ross's name. Wow. Wow. And he, and, and then all the other stuff that he came into contact with the CEO. Well, no, that don't even matter. That's going to be overshadowing yeah. because of y'all's success. Exactly. You, you're exactly right. I even think about it, that. Nobody cares about the other part. They're just looking at the success. Rate. Yeah, when they start reading the history books and, and going through the books and, and, and the future kids, it's going to be like, well, he tricked a whole lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> man, Rick Ross, man, God, dog, man. Because when I first heard, like I said, I didn't even think about it. But when you came home, it became very prevalent of what had happened. You know, people started wrecking. I was like, dang, man. Freeway out. You know, freeway out. What's gonna happen when <laughs> what's gonna happen when this thirty thousand a thirty million dollar movie hit the hit the screen and advertisement is all over and and, and, and now everybody also gonna call me. <laughs> you know, she she gonna find it. I need to talk to she gonna find say, I need to talk to it. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. Like if the way the bigger it gets, I'm gonna tell her how much money you got. <laughs> Man, you didn't want to talk to me when I didn't have nothing. That's it. I'm that's it. Like Mike Jones. <laughs> shout out Mike Jones, man. Huh? Man, shout out. Thank you so you much. You didn't like me now, y'all. How you hanging out with me, man? So just, again, man, I want to go back into the dispensaries a little bit. Give me uh, more, just give me a little bit more in detail, like for guys who don't understand how they're able to get into the business. I can, I can, I can, I can do that. Yeah, me. yeah. What we did is is we started a trend out here in California called social equity. Okay. And social equity, as you know, we never got our 40 acres in the mule. Never. <laughs> oh, no, I should have. And stop. I took, I like, but I don't took 40 acres. Stop asking. But I don't think you can give it to me. And I don't think one of them doing the most of us. No. So, so they came up with the idea <laughs> is why not give something back for slavery? Wow. So, you know, you can't go in there. If Supreme Court said you can't use black as a a reason to discriminate no more. Right. You know, you can't get in college, get special treatment in college because you're black. None of that. That's over with. They shut that down. Yeah. I think it was affirmative action or okay. something like that. Yeah. So what we did is we came up with the idea. What about people who were targeted by the war on drugs? Ugh. Because you know the war on drugs was targeted on black and Hispanic people. Uh, no, facts. No, that's big facts. Facts. That you, the numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. So what we said, since they illegally targeted these communities, why not allow these communities to benefit now from a drug that you used to target them for that is now legal? Wow. So if you are a convicted felon, and and most states, besides child molestation and armed robbery, you good. Yeah. Them two, they, they don't want them two in there, and I don't blame them. No, I get it. I, I get it. I don't like them two either. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but that, that then you guys had your head on the, to, to even go that far, to keep going, pushing. Yeah. When did you guys start the venture? Because you got to think about it. You've been home now. How long have you been home? I've been home 14 years. 14 years. It went by fast. It went by fast. What? What when did you guys start the venture to get that to, to make that happen? We started. I I didn't start it. I heard about it. Was and and I joined. Yeah, they had already started a movement, and when I heard about it, I just joined in with them. Wow, you know, with the movement. How long was you on that movement with them? Five years ago. Five started, years ago. Five years ago. Yes, that's, that's a lot of time, man. Yeah, to, to, to see it through. I wonder how long did it take them to, when they started. How long did it? Right around the same time. Same time? When they started, they started maybe weeks or months before I heard about it. Wow. Because I was with the little clicking, you know, going to City Hall, trying to get it all figured out and, and making sure that I could get a license. 
<laughs> so he was, he, he was like, I'm on this. Like, I, yeah, I really yeah. do this. And you know what else we doing too? Uh, me and my man Tim, we are getting, it's kind of like, I guess you heard about what, what they do with the, the football players, how they getting these NIT deals they've been. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we're going to be giving those same type of deals out. Well, if you're in high school, you're a great football player. Well, we're going to do all your merchandise for you. We'll create your merchandise, wow. help you create your company. That's right. And wild. then put your yep. stuff out for you so you can make some money while you're still in high school, while you're in college. Wow. Tennis players, basketball players, rappers. We don't care who you are. We want to help you hone your stuff. Now, with, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, they, they, they go do these deals and, and they don't get no money out of it. That's real. That's real. You know, they get. This way, you own you your stuff. Out of it. Yeah. Why not own your own? Like with me, I own mine. Yeah. You know, don't nobody tell me what I can put out, when I can put out. I put out when I want to. So we offer those deals too. I got to ask you about the clothes, like the, the dispensary name, uh, the brand. How are you guys branding that? I know you. 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 The dispensary. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, the, the just the logo, the brand, putting those things out there because that's you. That's going to sell. Well, well, yeah, we we do. You see what I'm saying? We're doing a brand. We're doing a brand for the for the dispensary. Um, one of the guys came up with the name. You know, man, name it after yourself. Freeway Ricks. That's that's it. Yeah, yeah. What, what is that? Yeah, possession. You know, with the S at the end. You know, mean that. Yeah. You possess it. So uh, any symbol, any logo. Oh yeah, we got a logo. You would see the sign, the sign. Yeah, I'm for the we got a big sign. We got a big sign in there. Like, and see, that's you know what I'm saying. I can't. But you didn't. Did you design the logo? Did you I doubt? Didn't, no. I didn't, did you? I didn't know. You approved I it. I approved it. Yeah, of course. They what made, to me. What made you? Did you pick just from that one? Because oh. it looked like Scarface. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I remember when me and my boys first went to watch Scarface, right? Yeah. And when we left out the day, they all start calling me. You, you Scarface. You the real Scarface. <laughs> when y'all was in the morning. Yeah. yeah. So New Jack City, Scarface is, 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 is Scarface for you. That's what they call me. I, you know. But I'm just saying, the new, you had New Jack City. Uh, that was in the eight. You already started. It was cool. It was cool. cool. What but that was in the 80, 88, 89, right? New Jack City. When, when, which one? when did Scarface come out? Scarface came out in the early 80s. So it was before that. That's why you marinated to that more. Yeah, well, you know, you know, really, who I wanted to be was Superfly. Oh yeah, that was, that was, that was, yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to carry that with the big. Hell, yeah, man, that's everybody. <laughs> but you can't remember that one. You want, you know, one. but you're not even a short guy, so I can't even see you even thinking. I wanted to be like that though. When I was, that ain't true. When I was like 14, my, oh, when you go to see me, he took me to see Superfly. I was like 14, 15. <laughs> I don't even know if I should have been watching that movie, right? Man, and and what I found out too is that movie planted a seed in my head. About yeah, cocaine. Yeah, yeah. See that movie could really, really. That movie could be the reason that I start selling cocaine. Really, I was in love with that. I was in love with with my man. I put all the ash to the to the to the side. Wow, why the ash was my man. I was trying to think of this, the same thing. That's the same thing Ice T told me when I was interviewing him, the book that he used to read. But it was, it was about the, the guy Iceberg Slim. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, I, and I read, I bring him up like it's, it's something else because he came from Jersey, or, or from New York or Jersey, he came up here, and then you came from you know from somewhere else and came to L.A. Like L.A. A lot of people was moving to L.A. back in the day. My uncle, my uncle, was this, 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 street, this, 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 this was was supposed to be. Less racism. Um, and somebody told me one time that California never had slaves. I don't know about that. Really? That's what they, I heard somebody said that one time that they never had slaves. So my mom was looking to get out of that because you know Texas was the last one to oh, bring slaves. You know Texas, mm-hmm. Juneteenth, and 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 uh, um, they still have black and white bathrooms in Texas. When I was about seven. Wow. Wow. So she was trying to get us away from that. She didn't want us to grow up. She must have knew I was a fool. All right. Now, I'm going to get killed. Okay. <laughs> they going to get up. And, you know, I didn't go to Texas and start selling dope to late, late in the game. Yeah. I was, and you went back, you went back to Texas. My man. cousins was down there. So I, I had to do put it. my cousins down there. Oh, man. I had to put them down. Man. I couldn't even look like. 
They let me all pro wood. <laughs> man, I was like, what the hell? There's something else going on now. This shit I ain't heavy at all. <laughs> Can you play with Kilo, man? And they went with it. They went with it. Yeah, my sisters grew up down there. You know, my twin cousins, they 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 used to run down there. And they were all over the East Texas side, right? Yeah, all the East Texas, Dallas, Dallas. And that, and that, and that's what I'm saying, man. Like, for you to still be here today telling these stories, man, some of them dudes, a lot of people didn't make it through. Oh, uh, no. But you see what I'm you saying? You know what? And, and, and I kind of, you know, I, and, and I'm going to pat myself on the back. Most of my guys, I only lost a couple guys in, in the game. Wow. I only lost about three dudes. And some of them went outside the game and started doing, you know, like one of my little dudes started robbing. Wow. You know, which was trying to get us. What I stood for. Yeah, you weren't even with that. No, he, but he stepped outside and he saw another rim that he thought he could, yeah, you know, okay, I can double dip, you know, and, and, and it didn't work out for him. No, it didn't work out for him. So saying that, that like most of my core guys is still here today. That's, and that's good, man. That's good because, like I said, a lot of people didn't make it through. And for, for us to still be sitting here after going through all the stuff, the challenges, man. Just dope, man. I want to say, man, thank you, man, for coming on Boss Talk. Thank you, my man. Guy, always, man. always. Uh, every know. time I come to L.A. or if you come to Dallas, because you ain't been back. You, when you met years ago, you said when you was coming to Dallas, you still haven't been by, by my hub site. You know what I'm saying? And you know, well, next time I that's how I ain't legalized yet. That's all. Be next like, time I come to that's Dallas. That's it. That's when He'll come back. Next know. time I come to Dallas, I'm going to make sure. I, I, when I come there, I'll be so there. They be pulling me. Yeah, I know. I know, but but do you think? Because I don't come there that much. Where is Texas going to legalize, man? They're working on it right now. I know, but they got to help. Man. We got to get them boys. And they're down there with them, with them, them illegal dispensaries. They kicking right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you got to figure Texas got to catch on in like Oklahoma taking you money. Yeah, Oklahoma going in. Louisiana Louis taking Alabama you going in. in. Um, Alabama. Everybody going. Alabama, Alabama went live. So everybody getting to the money. Texas again. Texas like, like Georgia. It's only by just like Texas, Georgia, <laughs> Last Wars. <laughs> In the states. You have, yeah, you have that same. Yeah, man, Georgia, Indiana. They still try to hold on. They hold it on. Wow. Man. Thank you for coming on the show, man. Again. Appreciate you so much, man. Uh oh. Okay. Being that you're on a dispensary now, you have people out here who don't have licenses who are just out here selling, you know, whatever. Is that something? How do they look at that now with these being, this being a legal, uh, California being a uh, place of legalization? Well, first of all, they're not going to incarcerate their way out of Okay. Okay. I get that. You can't, you can't get, the incarceration is not going to stop anybody from selling marijuana. Yeah. And then work when it was totally legal, <laughs> right? It's not going to work while it's halfway legal. We have to find a way to incorporate them into the business where they can start to make some money from the legal business. And what they've been doing is they've been shutting out the people who don't have a certain amount of money. So, you know, when, when I get the power, I'll be trying to incorporate with people who are selling on the street can get into the business and still make some money. It's all about educating. With everything. I mean, when you got education, you can make money. It's all about educating them. If they get that education, then they'll be able to not have to peddle it, try to figure out a way to get, you know. I'm going to ask you, I got to ask you this too, because I ain't never seen it like this. I went to a restaurant here the other night. They were giving away free marijuana, bro. What the hell is that? Not at the restaurant. No, it wasn't at the restaurant. It was just walking down the aisle. I'm getting ready to go to the restaurant. Hey, man, you want this? They giving out, They got packages. They got names on it. What the hell is that? Well, they probably promoting their brand. You know, you, you can just name it away. It's it's a glut of marijuana right now. Marijuana has went from when I started selling marijuana on the black market, I was paying twenty eight hundred dollars a pound. Right now, you can buy a pound of marijuana for eight hundred dollars. That's why what I thought it was about eight hundred dollars. Yeah, you can get a pound of marijuana for eight hundred dollars. So they 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 out here trying to get so the prices down. down. The price of marijuana is down. down. Girls is taking a beating right now. And and they got the names on it, so I guess they they doing that so you can go to their dispensary. It's got the name. And later on, when you want another one, you like it, then you buy that brand. That's that's what they're doing. Yeah, that makes sense. So because you got people out at even at restaurants and malls that give you samples of the food, it's the same thing, really. Same I didn't thing. think about that, but 
I don't know if I'll smoke it. It's I mean, hard to understand. It got to be a hell of a brand. You know what I'm saying? Like you, the, the brand got to, you got to know, like this is the brand. Issue, right. What hell yeah, smoke? man. Why would I open this up until I don't know? And, and, and that, and that, and that's going to be one of the things too, when people, um, get to the point to where they're not going to want to smoke nothing that they don't trust. That's it. And that's where the brands are going to come in. Man, free will again, man. Thank you for coming on Boss Talk 101, man. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to rock out with you? You can give me a Freeway Ricky Ross on Facebook, Freeway Rick on Instagram. You can order the shirt. They got the shirts, man. You got the, hey, you got the shirts right here. Come on now. Go get them. Hey, man, listen, man. Freeway Ricky Ross, man, like I said, man, to see what he's done, unbelievable, man. And he's a hey, he's boss talk one on one. Watch what I'm on group every day. Don't watch what I do. I watch <laughs> it. I'm on group. Man, what Melvin say when the boss talk one on one? What a boss is talking.